Hi and welcome to Harbour Unboxed. I'm your host Matt and today I've got the first exclusive look at NVIDIA's GeForce GDX 980 Ti. NVIDIA introduced the original GeForce 980 and 970 Maxwell GPUs eight months ago in September 2014. In January, we saw the release of the GDX 960, and of course in March we met the monster that is the Titan X. The Titan X took single GPU performance and pricing to a whole other level, and despite coming in at a whopping US dollars recommended retail price, the Titan X sales demand still exceeded Nvidia's supply. The new GDX 980 Ti seems to aim to bridge the gap both performance and pricing wise between the original GDX 980 and the Titan X. And in a way, it seems to me to be sort of the sensible version of the Titan X. With an RRP of 649 US dollars, if the performance is in the same ballpark as the Titan X, then the video could be onto a winner with this one. Let's quickly take a look at a few technical differences. The Titan X featured a fully fledged 24SM unit GM200 comprising of 3072 CUDA cores. The new 980 Ti is reduced to 22 SM units and 2816 cores. Where the Titan X had a massive 12 gigabytes of memory, the 980 Ti has 6 gigabytes. This is still 2 gigabytes more than the original 980, and quite frankly, 12 gigabytes was pointless and pretty unnecessary. 6 gigabytes is going to be plenty for gamers to run the latest AAA titles at 4K without having to worry about running low on memory. The base clock speed of the GDX 980 Ti is 1000 megahertz and the typical boost clock speed is 1075 megahertz. Both of these match the Titan X. Nvidia tells us that as it is a gaming enthusiast card, the 980 Ti is designed for overclocking and uses a six phase power supply with over voltaging capability and an additional two phase power supply is dedicated for the board's GDDR5 memory. Now there are three main technologies that Nvidia is counting on to push sales of high end GPUs such as the GDX 980 Ti. Microsoft will be releasing DirectX 12 later this year which will reduce CPU overhead and enable new features such as volume tiled resources. 4K gaming is another big one. Up to this point, the Titan X was really the only card that could deliver playable performance on the latest AAA titles at 4K. Virtual reality is the other main technology that's expected to drive PC gaming in the near future, and Nvidia at the moment seems to dominate this field. With all that said, let's get to the good part. Let's go and benchmark this card and see how it performs. Our first benchmark is Crisis 3. The 980 Ti averaged 50 frames per second at 1600p, making it 40% faster than the Radeon 290X, 27% faster than the original GDX 980, and impressively just 7% slower than the Titan X. At 4K, the 980 Ti delivered just 28 frames per second. The performance margins remain the same compared to the Titan X and GDX 980, but the 980 Ti was now 47% faster than the R9 290X. In Battlefield 4, the 980 Ti was a negligible 1% slower than the Titan X at 1600p, and 5% slower at 4K. While it was 30% faster than the GDX 980 at both resolutions, and even faster so than the R9 290X. In Battlefield Hardline, the 980 Ti delivered playable performance of 4K using 2 times MSAA, which was awesome. It was just 6% slower than the Titan X, and it was also 26% faster than the original 980, and 38% faster than the R9 290X. In Dying Light, the GDX 980 Ti gave us 38 frames per second at 4K, making it 10% slower than the Titan X. Meanwhile, it was 23% faster than the GDX 980 and 41% faster than the R9 290X. We tested The Witcher 3 using ultra quality settings, which means Nvidia Hairworks was fully enabled. The 980 Ti averaged an impressive 51 frames per second at 1600p and 30 frames per second at 4K where it was just 6% slower than the Titan X and 36% faster than the GDX 980 and the R9 290X. Grand Theft Auto 5 fans will be wrapped. The 980 Ti delivered a very playable 44 frames per second at 4K, again just 6% slower than the Titan X, while being 22% faster than the GDX 980 and 33% faster than the R9 290X. The release of the GDX 980 Ti at $650 sees the original GDX 980 dropped down from an RRP of $550 to an even $500. The Titan X still remains at $1,000 US dollars. Considering the 980 Ti is $350 cheaper, yet only sacrifices around 8% performance when compared to the Titan X, it represents pretty excellent high-end value. The Radeon R9 290X is still fantastic value of between $3 and $350, 
However, if you are planning on 4K gaming, you will require two cards. Overall, NVIDIA's GeForce GDX 980 Ti is an excellent high-end GPU solution. And in my opinion, at its current price point, the Titan X has been rendered kind of redundant. Thanks for watching this exclusive first look and benchmark of the 980 Ti. Let me know what you think in the comments, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.